All right, here we go. Hello and welcome to Accidental Origin, your weekly writing web show. My name is Brendan. This is my show. What's going on, guys? What is going on? Oh no, I dropped six frames. Sad face. All right, so today my plan is to work on the concept for the old runes, which I, if you've been around a while, I worked on for uh, Game Chef 2016, uh, which was in June. It was a 10 day game design competition uh, with feedback and all that. And I have an email here with all the feedback that I got. Uh, so there's a lot of peer reviews and all that kind of thing. Uh, and yeah, I had spent some time trying to, wanting to think about what, what I wanted to do with this concept. So I've done a little bit of that uh, and I got my feedback here. So we're going to try and revamp this concept a little bit, mostly because I had this other idea for a video game that I think would be really cool and kind of spawns off a similar idea of technology and a similar idea of, uh, how to develop a civilization sort of thing. So yeah, we're going to do that. Jump over here, got our main screen, scripting are open with our project file of Game Chef 2016, and all sort of the different sections, uh, which you will see, I don't know, where's my arm? Yeah, right above there. That's a weird foreshortening concept there. So yeah. I'm just gonna go and uh, highlight a couple of notes in my email here of things that I want to look at. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, reading through some of the comments here, it's exactly what I was thinking of, where there's a lot of combat and, and trap elements in my original game design, and I think that really sucks. <laughs> and the comments I'm getting here are kind of that that same in that same vein where it's like it's not 
that interesting because it's it's done. You can just play Dungeons and Dragons if you want to explore a dungeon, you know. things that people liked people liked uh, like the setting people like the concepts And I'm just thinking out loud right now, you know. So the map making was a very strong part of this game design. People like the map making. I like the map making. It's kind of one of the one thing that I think really works. To start off, we're going to shrink all this down and shrink that trash. What we're going to do is we're going to duplicate. This. We're going to take that and toss it in here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to Oh, hey, Disney, what's going on? This needs to go and think tables need to go. This needs to go as well. Uh, 
I'm doing all right. Thanks. It's been kind of a crazy weekend of social things, but other than that, not that that's a problem. Just, you know, it's a lot in one weekend. Uh, so this is a game concept I designed uh, for a uh, competition earlier on in the year that I am working on the second draft for because it relates to another concept that I'm working on that I have kind of in the back of my head. So I wanted to sort of see if I could bring this to another level and then use that as a jumping off point for another concept. I think this part is a little weak. Really that. Uh, role playing game. Well, do it yourself board game, I guess is a better descriptor more so than role playing game Yeah, so uh, technically it would be a board game. Yeah, <clears throat> I'll always love the concept of game design, something I've been into for a long time.
I think in terms of this concept, <clears throat> excuse me, I think I can keep the idea of being based in, in text-based adventure games, like being based in that sort of Yeah, being based in that read this. Uh, honestly, I was working on a similar concept. still am actually <laughs> you I mean the, the key to game design is well in my opinion it's finding that balance between complexity to make things interesting and simplicity to make things fun so it's okay to be complex if it makes the game interesting but it's not okay to be complex if the mix if it makes the game not fun. So, for example, uh, things that make games not fun or challenge in the wrong ways are things like encumbrance, like how many, like how much stuff you can carry in a game, or like, you know, sleeping or eating, or like certain things like. That really, unless unless they make the game interesting, are not fun to play with, you know.
Well, I don't really understand why you need an other deck, which is just made up of stuff from the other three decks. Like, that seems a little redundant to me. I also, uh, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what differentiates the monster deck and the ally deck. But yeah. To be fair, that's actually a smart decision. I mean, Microsoft Solitaire is kind of famous for what it does, right? You don't think so? I mean... Oh yeah, totally. Just play the ad version though. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> well, here's my question is, is like... So it sounds to me like your concept has an equipment deck more so than it has an armor deck. But, you know, keep in mind that it, since I've worked on a similar concept, it's possible that I just want you to make my concept. <laughs> so I'm not saying like you have to cut things or, or anything like that, but I'm just, I'm asking questions about how like I'm, I'm asking you to question yourself about why something exists. Why does it exist in your game? If you don't have a good answer, then it probably shouldn't be in the game. Lessons we learn about game design.
<laughs> I believe you. Sort of. Now that you're actually here, Sam, I have a question for you. Um, so I was thinking in this concept that what I really want to do is I want to uh, remove a lot of the weird ass tables because they're not useful. But what I was thinking was Oh, that's pretty cool. I have a friend who used to work at Disney. She worked in Ed Epcot in the Canadian Pavilion. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, so Sam, I wanted to remove the tables and I was thinking that I also wanted to remove the, the idea of the classes, like with all the weird special powers and stuff. Because it made the game feel way too combative and like D&D-esque in a lot of ways. But what I was thinking was It'd be neat if you did this in kind of like an old school adventure game sort of style where you could give each player a printout that would be uh, their available tables for the game. So each one would have kind of like a, it'd be, it'd be kind of like getting uh, a character or a class, but it would, it would have your kind of options for the game. So you could keep the dice pool and all that but each player would have a different table to go on. So it's not like on the global, like, it's not like if you saw someone take a four, you would know that that's the same four on your list. It would be different based on all the different lists sort of thing. If that makes any sense. I think it does, but like that's, that's sort of what I'm, I'm playing around with right now. And ideally, you would have, you know, like, if this is a four-player game, you have ideally six to eight different sets. So that it, it's not like you know there's four sets and there's four players. It's like there's eight sets and the, they could be distributed randomly.
Oh, weird. This makes more sense. Set up. I still need rounds. I still need winning the game. So yeah, I'm abandoning this concept of character creation. So that means my setup gets much easier.
materials. I think it should be three six hundred things. This makes more sense. I don't think this is necessary. So as the materials folder Here, this will be exploration. Cool.
Hey, Bio, what's going on? Things are going pretty okay. Pretty okay. Awesome, man. Glad to hear that people are writing. How good am I with proofreading? Uh, I'm very harsh. Um, I also, it also takes me a while to get to stuff. <laughs> but uh, the people who like my proofreading style come back a lot. So, you know, I do what I do. <laughs> I know Sam, I'm slow. It's it's fine. It's one of those things that it doesn't take me very long to do it. It just I have to actually sit down and do it, which is the longest part. Also, I will have your stuff for you tonight. I promise. I'm going to work on it as soon as I'm done the stream. I already printed it. It's right here. Bam. So as much as I want to play video games, I will sit down and do work like a responsible person. <laughs> well, I purposely didn't want you to make them out because uh, it has your address on there and stuff. <laughs> so, yeah.
So Sam, or in general, audience, hello audience, you're an audience of people, uh, do you think it would be better to have player markers on the map, or would it be better to have uh, players... have secret positions that are indicated on their own maps. Uh, I am working on a game concept that I started in June uh, that I haven't worked on since June, but uh, yeah. I just wanted a little bit of a breakup from working on that short film. We will be getting back to that, just like we will be getting back to Fear the Siren at some point. This is all part of the writing process. Keeping in mind that those two projects I do not work on off screen. I only work on them on screen. So it's not like it's actually taking me this long to work on it or finish it or anything. It's just, you know, I'm only putting in hours on screen. I want it to be competitive. And I know that I will have to re-evaluate the win condition as well. Because I don't think it works. Then zero occasions. Yeah, that's what I kind of figured. Game design is kind of in this weird spot for me. Where, you know, I feel like a lot of it is I take two steps forward and then one step back. Because I answer a question and then it just leads me to have six other questions. None of which I have an answer to. Well, I mean, maybe that's just my writing process in general is like that more so than, uh, yeah, I think secret locations. I also think that uh, I'm okay with proofreading it. The problem is, is I'm not going to be able to get it to it until at least next week. So if you're cool with waiting, then yes. Okay, then sure, I will do it.
So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a five minute break. I will see you all in a bit. <laughs>